<clears throat> I can't do either one. So uh, <laughs> uh, the rankings uh, haven't changed much, Steve, since uh, uh, we uh, uh, since the uh, the break. Uh, they still have Cleveland number one in the state, Bradley Central number two, Saudi Daisy number three. Well, folks, that is the region here. One of those three teams will not get to go to the state tournament. Yep. I uh, mean, there could be more, but, you know, it's going to what they do the second half. But most likely there's who, – who goes? Is Cleveland, Bradley? Well, we are on now. Oh, we are on. Okay. <laughs> you go? Thank okay, you, good. Daniel Brantley. And he says he has you recording already. Okay. That's good. But we've got one thing fixed today. There you okay, go. Okay, so great. Thank you, Daniel. <clears throat> uh, Cleveland, Bradley, Saudi in the same region. Traditionally, the three of the top teams in the state every year. Uh, I know many times uh, in the past, Bradley, Cleveland uh, has wrestled for the state championship. And then our Bradley... Saudi is right, so, you know, and Cleveland is doing very well the last four or five years, had a, had a, some great programs. Uh, these teams have not met each other in the regular season yet. Uh, Bradley did meet Cleveland at uh, the Cleveland Duels and lost by a point, uh, which sort of tells you that one match goes either way. It could have been a higher score, or, or Bradley could have won. Right. You know, the Bradley, Bradley was 11 points ahead going into the last two matches, and got pinned in both of them, so yep. those extra points come up. Saudi Daisy, we haven't seen. Saudi, uh, we had an opportunity to wrestle Saudi in the Cleveland Duels, and they decided not to wrestle. And, yeah. I, you know, I guess, you know, didn't want to give give away what they do or do not have. Or, uh, But, you know, in first of the year, Saudi was not in the top ten, and you offered to, to bet anyone who was out there. So if you bet with him, you, you owe him 20 bucks now because Saudi's number three. Uh, no other local teams uh, are in the top ten. Uh, Wilson Central, number four, another good team who beat Bradley a couple of years ago to put them in third place. Then got beat by Cleveland for the state championship. Beach High School, Tennessee, Knox Halls, Science Hill, Summit, and Mount Juliet. Uh, loaded with Middle Tennessee teams. Uh, the uh, I always say that these come out of Middle Tennessee. So uh, yeah. <clears throat> And so it, it's uh, it, well, these rankings don't really mean anything until uh, you can lose during the regular season and you just don't get a great seed. But you know you have to win so many to go to the region tournament here. Uh, you got to win the region tournament, or you don't. It don't matter what you do all season, right? Yeah. I mean, you have to qualify for the you region qualify, tournament. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the rankings here, and there's. I, this sounds like I'm being a you know, a uh, hometown guy here, but you know, after the first three, uh, uh, Wilson Central, they're they're okay. I've I've seen them have some good teams, and I think they're pretty good this year. But boy, I see some serious fall off there. Uh, the, the the from the top five to the bottom five, um, and they could surprise me. I, I could be totally wrong, and you know, one of these halls or Science Hill could just come in and 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 whip somebody. But um, boy, it's it just it's just a shame when you got three teams like Bradley, Cleveland, and Saudi in the same region here, and somebody's not going to the state. Duels, and because they're clearly the best three of the best of right. the four teams in the uh, state. Mount Juliet uh, was at the uh, Bradley Invitational, and I didn't see you know. any. Uh, you know, they had good athletes, but I didn't see anything great. But uh, Bradley will see uh, some of the Science Hills wrestlers in uh, uh, two weeks. Uh, Where are they going? They're going to the Fandetti. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, Fandetti so Brawl. Uh, they'll go. Uh, there's. They have a dual meet on uh, the night before, then they have a, a re regular traditional. Uh, they go to Knox Hall a couple of weeks after that. Uh, they go to Father Ryan next weekend, which uh, yeah, probably a good test for them there. Also, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, let's say, they, and this is not a scientific poll. This is a poll done by uh, uh, a, a group or a, a guy out of Middle Tennessee, and we've sort of lived with that and um, and then we got the end of uh, individuals uh, this year and uh, I, I like to go through those real quick uh, the uh, um, in the 106 uh, we got three guys from our region that are in the top six West Devaney is from Bradley Jacob Allen from Saudi and Tenero Thompson did I say that Tenario 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 East Hamilton uh, Bradley will wrestle East Hamilton coming up this Tuesday night 
uh, and over at Asheville Ray and East Hamilton at East Hamilton. Okay. And then on next Thursday, Bradley will be at home against Walker Valley. And that yes. is alumni night. Yes. So uh, if uh, you know any former Bradley wrestlers, uh, they need to come on by. They're usually, I think you serve them a little chilly. And mm-hmm. for and so come on by and see that. And um uh, be a special program there uh, that night. Also, it's the first time you can pick up the new documentary about Bradley wrestling. Uh, that night, they'll be on sale there at the the match. Yes, that's, that's so, always a big, that's a fun yeah. night. Ben, Ben's done it up well, and the people that help with it and have, mm-hmm. have done that up well, and I think it's good. Sometimes, I've, I saw people there last year I haven't seen in 15 years, haven't laid eyes it on It was a good crowd. You know, it is, yeah. and uh, uh, <clears throat> it was uh, good to see a lot of guys there. A lot of the state champions were back, uh, and uh, at Bradley, there's 44 individuals that mm-hmm. have, have won state champion, and uh, that's if you look at that's one per year every year the program started. Now it didn't it didn't come out that way. It didn't get one in seventy. Right, we didn't have any was, until. Yeah, we didn't have any for until it used to. But if you take the number of years that we've had a program, it's equal to one per year. And there's a lot of teams across the state like to have that kind of numbers. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yes. It's pretty pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I've seen West Devaney, uh, uh, a good wrestler. I haven't seen Jacob Allen or. Tenario yet? Uh, let's say we'll see that we don't wrestle Saudi till oh I think with the the late two or three more weeks on a Thursday night just before the the uh, the duels. Yeah, usually it goes pretty close to uh, uh, got uh, Walker Valley one week, Cleveland the next week, Saudi the third week, or or you might switch those around, but usually right. it's bam 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 three yeah. Thursdays in a row. Well, you know, of course the the win against Walker Valley or. You know, Walker Valley against us is important to earn your right to that, uh, <clears throat> the uh, duel. Right. Uh, and, and right now, see, uh, looking to me, I think that East Hamilton could be that fourth team this year for the first time. I really don't know. Uh, I've not looked close I, enough at the other teams to know. They seem to have, uh, they look pretty good, but, I, you know, we'll find out. We'll see them Tuesday. Uh, Walker Valley, uh, um has had a good season so far, but, you know, it's been Bradley, Cleveland, Saudi Daisy, Walker Valley. Right. Uh, Walker Valley's got to be at East Hamilton, and I don't know when they wrestle, but that'll be interesting. A number, uh, in the 113 weight class, T.J. Hicks uh, still ranked number one there, and Garrett Bowers ranked number four from Cleveland, the guys from our region. Uh, T.J. And, ba- uh, and Garrett had a great matchup at the Cleveland Duels. Yes, they did. And I talked to T.J. about that match, and he... <laughs> He's uh he's he's trying to make some changes and become a little more technical and don't be so predictable with his attacks and uh, he, he's using his brain. I'm glad to see TJ. He can be stubborn sometimes and well, so I'm glad to hear TJ has a brain. That's exactly oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> he's nasty. He, he is a super kid, you know. He is. Uh, he's listening. He's, he's he understands. He needs to change some things up. Okay. He can't attack everyone just head on, straight on. And uh, Bowers is one of those kids. He's a he's a slick kid. He thinks when he wrestles and he's intense. And we got to attack him a different way a little bit. Uh, you know, TJ you, does learn, uh, I think, when he sees someone the second time, you know, uh, he attacks them a little differently. Yep. And, uh, he, uh, <clears throat> and you know, that's a big matchup for Bradley-Cleveland matchup is what happens between TJ and Garrett. If, if TJ only wins by a point and only gets those three points again, uh, you know, that gives another advantage to Cleveland because yep. that's going to be tough there. So, But, once again, from the region standpoint, there's two tough guys at 120. Uh, Bryce Pond from Cleveland and Trey Hicks from Bradley. Uh, those two guys are, uh, um, Bryce won last time. And that's he how did. come he's, uh, over him. So he we'll wait and see what happens there. Trey's, Trey's wrestling really well right now. The other day I, I watched him wrestle some and he's looking as good as I've seen him look. And I know Pond's a good kid, so that, that'd be fun to watch. I'm looking I forward think to it. Bryce, uh, Bryce Pond was 106 last year was. and was pretty tough. Yeah. He's a good kid. Uh, moved up to 120, and uh, like I say, uh, of course, another place for a good match up there. Whoever wrestles uh, uh, there, you know, even the team wants them to stay off their back. Yes. If you give up uh, a one point loss, it's bad enough. But uh, 126, uh, the only guy in our area uh, is Charles and Charles Wheaton uh, from Saudi Daisy, and I've not seen him wrestle. So I haven't uh, either. Uh, 132, Colton Landers, uh, good wrestler. Uh, he's probably been starter four years at Cleveland. Yes, that's, yes. Uh, he, he's been around a long time. And then Ryan McElhaney, uh, a state champion, uh, 
uh, been beat by Colton. Yes. Uh, was he? Uh, did, he did he get pinned? No, no, no he, no, he got beat, okay. but he got uh, he got handled. Uh, Colton controlled the match, controlled the tempo, controlled the scrambles. He just wrestled a really good match, and you know Ryan's a real. Ryan's a good scram, but he's what I call a goer. He he he's intense and he keeps moving the whole time. He never he never stops. And a lot of times because of that he wins scrambles and uh but this time, you know, Colton was one of those kids also and with a lot of skill and a lot of desire and he matched him and, and, and beat him. So uh, it'll be fun to watch that. Two guys like that to get after it and go hard, it's fun to watch that regardless. Hey, you know, I've noticed Ryan over the last couple of years, um, I call it the turn here after the, the after Christmas break. Right. He seems to be a different wrestler. Yeah. Uh, last year, his second half of the season was just dynamic. I mean, yes. he, just, he just changed. And, yep. uh, of course, uh, Bradley will hope that happens, and and, and uh, Colton will try everything. Uh, I say, th- those are two good wrestlers there. You know, they he, that can go. At 138, uh, we have uh, Grant uh, Lundy from East Hamilton and then Cody Matthews from Cleveland. Uh, I know Cody. He's a pretty good wrestler also. Once again, uh at one thirty eight, who's it? Bradley's at one thirty eight. Oh my goodness, Steve! I can't. Um, Knox is at one forty five. Right, just below Knox is um, Andy uh, Moore, Andy Robinson. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Andy that's Robinson. It. That's yes. it. Good call. Um, <clears throat> he's a first time starter uh, and uh, a good wrestler. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, uh, he'll have a tough matchup with Cody, and then he'll we'll find out how. Good, he can go against Grant Lundy. Uh, uh, we haven't seen him, but uh, we expect him to be if good. If he's ranked third, he's done something right. right. Uh, not Fuller at 145 is number one. Yeah. Um, based on the fact is he hadn't lost this year. Uh, he's a three-time state champion. Uh, he's come up, what, this is his third weight class or fourth? Yes, fourth. Fourth weight class. So, uh, And then uh, then Emery Holcomb from Saudi Daisy, then Logan Whiteside from Cleveland. Logan uh Probably a three-year starter at Cleveland. Uh, he's been in their lineup. Uh, Knox has a chance to be a four-time state champion. That's tough. I mean, three three times is pretty tough. I mean, if you go back and look at the history of Cleveland, Bradley, Saudi Daisy, there's not a lot of four-time state champs. We have one at Bradley, one at Cleveland. Mm, one at Cleveland, yes. Uh, yes. I don't know. So, well, Saudi was. Uh, Saudi's got one. Yeah. The blonde kid. Um, uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, I know you. Yeah, that, uh, that blonde Welcome kid. to that age. <laughs> uh, fun. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Ron and I play this game all day long. Let's try to think of that person's name. Uh, it'll pop in my head in a second. I'm going right. to I'll out. be Just standing in CVS and I'll go, oh, and I'll say <laughs> well, the that's name. Exactly they right. had one, well, last year they had one who could have been a four time and got. Uh, beat on a technicality. He uh, a, a guy got injured. Oh yeah, no, he wasn't gonna be a four timer though, was he? Yeah, he was gonna was be a four timer. Yeah, okay. well, and I can't think of his name either. But <laughs> uh, and I was standing, welcome to Alzheimer's Radio. Yes, <laughs> I, that's why we print this. Yeah, <laughs> no, me too. Uh, I was standing next to that mat when that all went down, and the the kid who got injured wanted to go. He stood up and said, let's go. I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah, I remember that. And ran to the center, and his coach says, no, he can't I go. I remember that. Well, you know, that, you know, the coach got yelled at a lot, and but maybe he was trying to protect his wrestler, too. Maybe. Uh, you're, maybe. you're being kind. Well, I, you know, I, I, maybe. Yeah, right. Anyway, if you if you do an illegal move and you injure someone, and an illegal move can ap- happen accidentally, not something you did intentional, uh he was he lost right and uh, so this guy was going to be a four-time state champ he was there and i can't think of his he, name he's yet. the kids who, whose dad owns steve's landing oh uh, yeah um, um <laughs> isn't that terrible i know his dad owns steve's tucker. landing is that it tucker, tucker russo tucker russo uh, uh, working together yeah. with God. There we tucker go. russo yeah he was a great kid too and yes. uh and if you haven't ate at steve's landing oh my they're closed this week though oh are they i was going to go down there oh, this shame. week um, Steve and Steve uh, here and Steve Henry sort of turned me on to Steve Landing and That's some good stuff. The shrimp and the ribs and uh, the shrimp. Oh my goodness! And uh, best ribs I've ever had, probably. Yeah, it, it's it's very good. And uh, we, we went down for uh, some, our family's birthday and took Will and my brother, son-in-law, and all that people down there and uh, talked to Mr. Russo and uh, uh, 
Good guy. He's a nice fellow. He, he really is. is. And uh, he's a good cook. So I recommend you'd go to Saudi Daisy Landing. They didn't sponsor this, but we're going to give them that. Uh, at 152, Jay Graham from Ray County, Austin Matthews from Bradley, and Tony Wilson from Saudi. Man, that's a tough, tough uh, region here. Uh, we'll see Ray County Tuesday night. So uh, Austin will get to uh, wrestle against them. Yep. Uh, then, of course, Tony Wilson coming up there. And uh, so Austin uh, has a chance. Just a good straight-laced kid, you know what? Yes. Uh, and that, uh, uh, he seems just to never give up. You're exactly right. He, he goes all, way, all six minutes, and he wins a lot towards the end of the match because he's still going. Yeah. yeah. And, uh uh, he's like Michael Haney. He doesn't he doesn't stop moving. He's right. perpetual motion. He he wants to win so badly. I think. And I'm like that when I sit down. Yeah. Well, I get <laughs> from, from, from Mitchell. When I eat, I'm that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve's sitting over here weighing about 160 pounds and saying, <laughs> I like to eat though. You're back to your wrestling weight, aren't you? I was. I made my wrestling high school weight back in the summer. I'm within 10 pounds now, though. I could get there if I needed to. If there's a weigh-in, let me know. Oh. I'll get down there. <laughs> Guys, uh, I. I weighed 160 when I was 12, I think. <laughs> but though. Ron has lost 90 pounds. I know. I noticed uh, that. I, I, yeah, it's still, now I'm just real fat. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, degrees. Degrees. Though. All right, 160, uh, Michael Gregory up from Walker Valley. He's about a three-year, four-year starter at Walker Valley. Uh, uh, his uh, He's got a relative. Uh, uh, Walter Presswood's his relative. I didn't know that. Yeah, Walter Presswood is uh, uh, maybe his uncle. Hmm. It used to be our. No, it's not his uncle. It might be his great uncle. Walter was our board chairman for a yes, long time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He has, uh, uh, they're related to Walter Presswood. I just know that. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, uh, come out of Polk County group, you know, uh, that pair. So, uh, Michael, uh, uh, a good kid. Uh, and he's going to take on Caleb Atkins from Bradley in, uh, a few, our Thursday night. Caleb, uh, the guy who didn't wrestle last year. Came to the team, as I believe. Right. Uh, came back. Um, of course, didn't get to wrestle for a championship or anything. Caleb Frank's number two. This is a good matchup. This this will be a, a, an excellent one. Um, he left last year, and now he ranks number two. Well, he was he was he was a state place winner as a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. And last year he and when he said I made a mistake, he really yeah. has to. Well, play. he was a starter last year and decided to right. leave the team. Just, and and uh, you know I, you know there's. Yeah. Um, you know, you just think sometimes. It is not. You just don't think. <laughs> it's yeah. not the easiest sport I've ever seen. You know, of course. My, I did watch him on the sidelines, though, last year during all the championships and stuff, and he looked like well, he, he, he looked like he had regret okay, on his uh, face. You're getting a phone call, I believe, Ron. Yes, we are. Let's see who's calling us. Hey, you're on the li live on the wrestling mat. Hey, how you doing, Ron? I'm doing great. Who's this? Coach Shriver. Hey, Coach Shriver, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. I was just checking in with you guys. I'm up here in the mountains. Couldn't uh, get uh, any reception, so I just thought I'd see you. Who you got with you today, Steve? Steve Lockson sitting here with me. All right. Hello, Coach. How you doing, big guy? I'm doing great. Thank you. Hope you all had a great Christmas and I'm ready for a big new year. Yeah, I can't believe you didn't drive all the way from the mountains back down here to do this show. Well, you know how it is. It's, uh, well, I, I went up a couple of weeks ago, and we didn't do the show either. So. <laughs> uh, Dwayne, 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 I wanted to tell you that in uh, the documentary coming out about Br uh, Bradley Wrestling, it'll be out next Thursday, uh, your name's mentioned several times in there, and it was all good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure glad to hear that. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Jerry Frazier talked about the early days of uh, the program and when after – Bradley would wrestle Cleveland. Uh, he'd say, "Hey, could you show us something?" <laughs> and uh, you and uh, Coach Miller would actually take time to help uh, show Jerry and uh, and the, those young Bradley wrestlers some things to do. Oh yeah, we 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 had them right there, right from the beginning, practicing with us and everything, and that whole first year. So it was it was fun to help that program get going, and of course that was the purpose, and and it's, it proved out to be pretty successful, I think. Well, yeah, you know, we were just talking about the rankings. Cleveland, number one. Bradley, number two. Saudi Daisy, once again, this region, the best in the state. And sadly, one of those three teams probably won't go to the duels. Or, yeah. Well, one of those three teams are not going to the duels, we well, should say. 
Sounds like a familiar scenario, doesn't it? Yes, uh, we've been on both both ends of those things too. We've been and and we've stayed too. Have you uh, heard anything about the uh, any of the tournaments or what's going on this weekend? I'm out of touch with anything, so I don't really know how Cleveland did down there in Vestavia or what Bradley and Walker Valley were doing. Uh, they don't. Bradley Walker Valley wrestles Thursday, uh, and Bradley's not in a tournament. Oh, okay. I don't know about Walker Valley. I didn't look. Uh, I, I looked last night late on uh, uh, track wrestling, and uh, I think Bryce Pond had finished number one, and they had no other results posted. Okay. So far. And uh, uh, it had some other guys who had won matches and some who had got beat, uh, but it didn't have any real uh, final final results, and I hadn't looked this morning. Yeah. Well... Well, y'all doing good. Everything's going well for everybody. I hope. Oh yes, it's going great. We are uh, ready to uh, for uh, Bradley Walker Valley, uh, Cleveland Saudi Daisy, Cleveland Bradley Bradley Saudi Daisy, uh, Walker Valley against all those guys. I mean, we basically this oh, is uh, the next the next couple of weeks will be pretty interesting. I think. Well, yeah, and as we've been telling the listeners, that it, it takes. Uh, uh, the four best teams in our region go to the regional dual meet to decide two teams to go. And so who you beat this here in the next couple of weeks makes a big difference. Oh, yeah. And who beats yeah. you. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, it looks... I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time, but uh, I just wanted to t- you know, check in with you. Looking forward to getting back next week. So, Okay, and like I say, uh, once again, uh, uh, uh I'd like to say thank you to all the things you did early for Bradley Wrestling and all the things you've done for Cleveland Wrestling and wrestling uh, at whole in this community. Well, I'll tell you what, I love it. I love it. It's a great sport. Okay, and uh, go Bears. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear from you, Coach. People like that guy sitting with you there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, Dwayne. Right. Good talking to you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Dwayne's a long-time... Uh, Coach, uh, was he the first Cleveland coach, him and Al together? Or? I, think so. I think so. Well, he was before Al. Well, was he before? Well, then mm-hmm. he must be the first coach. Yeah, he was there. before Al. He was uh, a great guy, knows wrestling, and uh, he's a Blue Raider. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And sort of like you and I are Bears. That's so, exactly yeah, right. Uh, I respect that. Uh, and uh, He loves wrestling, too, though. He really does. Uh, he, he does, does. and uh, he, he respects good wrestlers. And uh, uh, Caleb, back to Michael Gregor uh, at 170. We don't have anybody in our local area. It's ranked at 170. Right, uh, yeah. So uh, a little surprised, but, uh, uh, of course, uh, a big matchup will be uh, uh, Henley and uh, what's the Cleveland wrestler at 170 beating? Quit doing this to me. I, believe, <laughs> well, I, I hope. Well, he's those a, two guys. He's the, young, he's the younger brother, the one that wrestled several years ago. Um, that don't help me. Oh, my God, I know. But in my mind, it sounds, it sounds right. SQ? Uh, no, um, I'll tell you in a second. I'm All sorry. right. I, I need notes in front of me, I guess. Oh, I do. All right, 182, uh, two guys from our area, Jack Hicks from Cleveland and Ed Elkins from Bradley. Uh, I like the way Jack Jack Hicks looks like a worker at Cleveland High School. You know, he's one of those guys. I, I thought he would turn out to be good. And uh, Ed Elkins, uh been injured early in the year, has wrestled some. Uh, he wrestled at the Invitational, still has some soreness in the shoulder, so I guess uh, this time off will probably be good for him. And uh, uh, I think Ed's a senior this year. I think right? so, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, good luck to Ed there. That another big matchup. Uh, 195, no local guys that are uh, from our region in there. Uh, hmm. At 220, Ty Beck, uh, he was a medalist last year at 180. Uh, what is it? One eighty. They change these weights too many times over the years for me. Eighty two, is it? Eighty two now, yeah. Uh, Eighty two. He was uh, a medalist at one eighty two. Uh, then uh, Victor Benrosky. Ben- yeah. Uh, he's from Ottawa. Uh, didn't do well at the Bradley Invitational. He he he, he got uh, stuck early there. Yeah, he was top uh, seed, I believe. Yeah, and uh, I think he. Uh, he, boy, he does, don't he? He's a big old strong guy. I think he he was a medalist. I think he went fifth or sixth, I think, because he, he wrestled right there to my right <laughs> and towards the end of the night. 
Yeah, I feel bad for a kid like that. And just, I mean, just the way things worked out, there's no, yeah. no one's wrong here. But he, uh, you know, he, he had a guy, guy like uh, Coach Blackman as his head coach mm-hmm. uh, at, at, at Udawa before Coach Blackman left. And here's, you know, two big bodies that can work out together every day. He could have really taken that kid and showed him more this year right. and more and improved him a lot more. And all of a sudden with, with Coach Blackman's exit back to Bradley, which we're glad about, you know, it kind of Mr. Bedorsky there has got, you know, he lost a good asset that he had uh, with, with, with Bryant. Uh, but, you know, that's the way things go sometimes. Like I say, if you see him, you know, uh, uh, I, I told Debbie he looks like a Russian, and I don't know what a Russian looks like, but he has a big, he has a, what does a Russian look he has like? a big block. He is just a, he looks like a college kid. Yeah, he's. I'll tell you what a Russian looks like to me. I always thought it since I was very young. I always thought that Gordon Connell from Macaulay. The coach, yes, looked like a Russian. I don't uh-huh. mean, like you. What, what quantifies that? Why? I don't know. It's sort of their head square. He looks me. something. His eyes are like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I know what you mean. Though, what it looks like. But uh, and he, uh, of course, I guess his last name sort of get put that in there. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, he, he's a big, strong kid. Uh, like say, uh, uh, if wrestling technique, I think would help him tremendously. Like we talked earlier, mm. and at heavyweights. Uh, of course, Bradley's heavyweight's been hurt the most of the year, but Nick Boykin from River, Riverdale, right. uh, he's a stud. National champ. Yeah, he is. Uh, the Kramer kid's tough. The number yeah. two kid here, Coach Kramer from Wilson Center, that's his son. Oh, is it? He's one of those kids that he, he's not much to look at as far as, you know, looking, mm-hmm. you know, a hulking figure there in front of you. He's not that way, but, boy, he's a tough kid. He has keeps good position for a heavyweight, knows some little trickery, knows some little trips and things. When I first watched him wrestle, I thought, this kid's pretty slick for a heavyweight particularly. And he goes. He goes hard. So um, that, that might be a good matchup. I mean, you never know. If he Nick thinks- Boykin and uh, Kramer. Okay, but Boykin is uh, he uh, pretty tough. Oh yeah, pretty tough. I, we, I watched him last year. He won the state title. Uh, and then uh, from Cleveland is Titus Shafton, uh, sophomore. Uh, Dwayne Shriver's, uh, 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 you know, Dwayne called just a minute ago. He's real big on uh, on this kid. He said he's a good kid. And uh, well, he's athletic for a big guy. Yeah, we bump DJ up to him. DJ moves well for a big kid too. He's a weight class below, but he has definitely grown uh, this year. Yeah, DJ. Yes, uh, he has mentally, physically, yeah. and wrestling wise. Yeah, he has. He has. When I watched the way DJ would use his athleticism and try to get in and on Titus and uh, and and Shaft, and he moved right with him. I mean, he I was really impressed with his kid's size and his his agility, how mm-hmm. he moved and how he fought for every takedown and position. And uh, he he won me over when I watched that yeah. match. Uh, Seth Garcia is uh, is the uh, 220 for Cleveland, and I think we bumped around there. And uh, I don't know if we'll just give up the heavyweight and keep uh, and try to go after Seth this time. Hard, we yeah. don't know. Hey, you know, and let's go to Coach Smith, and uh, uh, they're uh, it's pretty interesting to play those games uh, and switch around and. I, you know, I used to notice you you never switched around much. You went straight at people. Well, no, well, I did for a long time. That's that's one place in my career that I that I um, changed a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was younger, coaching uh, for quite a long time, I was pretty much like my attitude was that these guys have earned their spots, and we've gotten there with these guys and these weight classes, and we're going to go heads up. I was kind of stubborn about it. And uh, that's what we did, and 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 we won our share. We won our mm-hmm. share that way. But uh, you know, there were times when I looked in retrospect and thought, well, if we had done this, maybe that would have happened. If this, and uh, so I, I did begin to. And I, what I would do is I would lay the foundation at the parent meeting early in the year, and with the kids, I would tell them, you know, when you win a spot uh, in the traditional. Um, uh, state tournament, region and state, that's your spot regardless. If you're the right. 135, you're the 135. Nobody's taken that. You earned it. You won challenge matches. However, in the in the duels, if it's a team, that's a team championship. And if I see an opportunity for the team to have more success and win and make us all state champions, you know, the JV, everybody, uh, by bumping you or whatever, I may do that. And I'd never done that for years. I'd kind of look down on that. And uh, but you know, I, like I said, I grew a little bit as a coach, and I saw the big picture. It's different too because in wrestling you have these two state championships. If that were the only state championship in wrestling, the, being the duels, I doubt I would have done it. I doubt I would have taken that from a kid when he earned it. And however, in the in, in our sport, you come back two weeks later and have a chance to individually do well and win a state title, uh, a team title with your team, with you at your weight class. The, the, one of my most enjoyable moments as a coach, and I've, I've got a lot of enjoyable moments I look back on every once in a while, is 
uh, I told this story. I hope it don't bore anybody, but I'll tell it quickly. Um, Cleveland, one year, I can't recall the year exactly. It was around 09 or um, something like that. And uh, Heath Esslinger, Coach Esslinger, who I coached, was over at Cleveland doing mm-hmm. a great job. Right. And Coach Esslinger was very good at preparing kids individually for matches. He would take his kid and watch film and, and, and break down our, our kid's technique and this is how you're going to beat this kid. Do this. Left leg lead. Don't this. Don't reach with the right hand. When he goes here, you go there. When he zigs, you zag. That kind of thing. And um, and he was good at that. And and as the as the year wore on from the year before, there were some matchups that were the same the, the following year. Uh, we saw those kids wrestle a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and wrestling very defensively in some situations, stalling, playing the line in some situations, and going after our weaknesses in some situations. And I I recognized right away that he was doing that. And and he's a good coach. And so. Uh, in the region championship, they had uh, the region uh, tournament. They had done some things that caught my eye, and so uh, I am sitting at a. I'm sitting at a. Uh, uh, oh heck, a Ruby Tuesdays before the f- championship finals. We reached the finals, so I had Cleveland that year, and we had somebody hurt. There was an injury at 171, and I can't recall who it was, but I was going to bump in a kid there. We call Space Man. And, and he's a great kid. He quit the year before, but right. came back, and he's a great kid. I wanted to bump him in there. That was the plan. But as I looked at the lineup and how they wrestled us so close in some uh, previous matches at certain weights, because he was planning that way, he was he was that was the whole plan for them. And this was the this was it. This was the crescendo. The, the state championship were going to mm-hmm. knock us off here and, and take that title. They thought. And as I looked at it, I got me a napkin out and a pen, and I sat there at the table and I started doing matchups. And we actually went, actually what we did, well, back to the hotel, I called the coaches, called a meeting, talked to the coaches, I called that kid in, talked to him, and uh, what we actually did, if you remember, is we went, I don't know what way it started at, maybe 119 or around there, that mm-hmm. vicinity, and we rolled them up, and I bumped seven guys in a row. I've never seen it done where you bump maybe one or two, but I bumped seven guys up a weight class. So that and, and Cleveland had no idea we would do this. I had no idea we would do this an hour before. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, so we rolled out there at one nineteen or whatever and we sent out the kid from the weight class below. We we'd bumped we'd thrown a J V in there before where it was a good matchup and won it. And we start bumping them up. And I kinda of would glance across the mat and look at not just Heath Esslinger, but look at Coach Phillips' face. Without looking, without getting good eye contact, just look at their face, and their expression, and it was after the second or third one, it was a puzzled look on their face, and they, they I think they'd figured out, maybe they'd been had a little bit, mm-hmm. they'd been tricked, uh, just because the, 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 you got this kid who for weeks and weeks and weeks is is focusing on one opponent. I'm going to beat this one opponent. I'm going to beat this style, this particular kind of kid, and all of a sudden you go out there in the state finals with the pressure that's already there. And now you're facing a kid you never dreamed you'd be wrestling in the state finals. This kid's a lighter weight than you. Of course, he's a lighter weight. It's five, six pounds. And our kids were pretty good. Mm-hmm. You're not getting some little some little weak five or six pound lighter than you guy. You're getting a stud kid coming up to you to take your trophy, so to speak. And uh, and uh, you know, we bumped seven weights up, and we won seven weights. We won every one, and we blew that. We blew it out. And uh, that's probably the, one of the most satisfying wins that I ever remember. Not because of anything that I did, just because it was a crazy idea and we did it and it, it blew their idea out of the water and their plan they had. But just watching the way my kids responded, the way they weren't fearful to go up and wrestle a bigger kid. And uh, like I said, every one of them won. And uh, it was it was outstanding day. You, you had a few studs along that line. That's a pretty good kid there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. that that's good. What, what, now let me ask you the tough question. What is the the toughest loss that you ever had? I mean, you didn't have a lot of them. So, I mean, what is the toughest one that just that still says, oh, my gosh, you know, if we'd done one thing or what? what or I guess the toughest, I, I don't know. Well, you know, anytime you lose a state-level match, <laughs> state finals to Clarksville or a state finals to whomever, <laughs> losing it at Clarksville would be even yeah. worse. Yeah, we, we we did that once. That was fun. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think the one maybe that uh, that really stuck with me is um, uh, when we when we when our home win streak got got broken. We had, we had 140 some wins in a row yeah. at home, and and Saudi came in, and and I knew it'd be a great match. Saudi was good. We were good. I knew it was going to be tough. And I remember before the match having all my um, all the alumni from Brad. I went around in the stands, had them come over into the wrestling room 
and just, I don't know, not talk to the guys, but be there mm-hmm. and talk to the guys with those all these alumni from 15, 20, 25 years before there. To, so the guys could see they represented this bigger picture and what they had done and the, how proud people were of them. And, and uh, you know, and it, everything was everything was set up right and good to go. And we just got a few breaks didn't go our way. And a couple kids that I will not mention maybe underachieved that day. They didn't, they didn't, um, you know, uh, meet the call, so to speak. One big pin, I remember. And yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah and, and there was a couple places we had people let down. And, you know, any of those get reversed, one of those, and we win the match. Yes. And we didn't. And uh, that was very disheartening. And I remember that was very, that was hard to take because we should have won it and kept that string going. It was a long streak. It was 17 years and 140 some wins. And I remember something else that I, again, without names, something I was very disappointed in that to me, it, it stuck with me to this day. And I shouldn't be like this. I should be bigger than this. And I, I, mm-hmm. I you can't help what you feel, I guess. And I remember as I would look around, as, as it became evident it was going to be a close match coming out in the last couple of matches, I would glance around the gym. I was pretty focused on the wrestling, but I would also take in my environment as I coached. And some of the people that I saw cheering against us, for us, that didn't have, they didn't have a dog in the race. Did not, they weren't Cleveland people. These were not uh, Saudi people um, that were just cheering to see our record fall, something that guys worked so hard for in our program. And, you know, that's one of those things where you just, that picture sticks in your mind. And you just you're not angry. You just wonder why is that? Why do they want to see us fall? This is and if it's a society person, absolutely, I understand that. My gosh, or if it's somebody that just hates our program, I would understand that. You know, we beat them years ago, and but these are people, a couple, just two or three. Yeah. And I was very surprised by that. I never forgot that. And to this day, when I see these people, I, I, I want to say, why did you do that? I don't understand why. You know what I mean? And I should be bigger than that. I really should, but I, I, you can't help. It, it is tough, uh, you know. But people uh, have the, that white bear paw thought was a target. Though. Well, sure it was. Uh, you, you know, going uh, traveling around with the team for several years now, that you walked into Clarksville and you, you just there was Clarksville people who would just tell you off. I go, what have we done? Yeah. I said, they said, what are you doing here in our gym? I go, you're having the tournament. We aren't our right to be. So it's, you know, sports, you know, Dev and I talked about this morning before we got here. I said that, uh, you know, I, I don't dislike Cleveland or Walker Valley or Saudi Daisy and uh, know a lot of those kids. And, and, of course, we know the coaches. And generally, they're all nice guys. You know, I, I don't think I know any coach I don't dislike there used to be some but I, yeah. I, won't, I won't name any name but um but the night we wrestle them uh they beat them you know and after that i hope they go win i mean it's right you know if when we beat cleveland i hope cleveland beats everybody else and then we get to meet them again for a state title uh it's good for wrestling in our community and uh uh and it sure is fun it sure I mean, it is it's more fun when you win of course you know in both that, but uh, you just hate to see people that <clears throat> cheer against you for no good reason other than you were successful. Mm-hmm. You know, if we, if we did, we were thuggish or we did something wrong. I can see that. But I, I, I remember to banquet when I think my last year, maybe uh, I kind of evaluated it and I said, you know, over the years I heard people say and, and it, word got back to me that people had said things like, you know, that stupid song. You know, they come out to that stupid song and the lights down. They they come running out to that song and they hate that song and it's an old song and it's a, from the eighties and all these the cliché and all these things they would say and you know and these people that would tell me this would be upset and I said uh, don't get upset first of all it's none of their business what we do it's our traditions what we do and, and I said you can't blame these people wrestling is an emotional sport it's a physical sport where somebody you love is going to get beat up grab and whipped and embarrassed and beat up sometimes or even your person. And I said, what the, the reason they hate that song so much is for, for how many years now have they come into our house and heard this song in and, and their subconscious brain? All that song means is they're about to take a whipping. And they know it for, for 17 years and 140 some wins in a row. That song meant someone is going to get their dreams hurt and broken. And, and so they have bad feelings about it. That's not personal. That's just that's just their subconscious saying, uh oh, there's that stupid song again. We're about to get whipped. And I took pride in that. I think yeah. that was great. Well, uh, I always like to take pictures of all that's going on, and you see the other team stand there just watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, I noticed. But now there's some coach that brings his kids just so they see that. There, there are several teams I think would come to Bradley that uh, say we're going to come wrestle Bradley. We don't know. We don't think we can beat them, but we want them to show them what a big time program does. And uh, right. you know. Uh, but part of any sport is that intimidation factor. 
walk into the Bradley gym. Uh, if you're a basketball team and, you, and you're a girls basketball team, you see the all the state championships and the, the Jim Smitty awards in there. Uh, if you're wrestling, you see all I think the wrestling. That's one of in the there. fun things about watching all the videos that we watched uh, doing this documentary is that there'd be one banner up on the wall in the background, and then the next shot. Five or six years later, there's two, or three more oh, banners. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then yeah. by the end, the whole, you know, you can't watch the guys on the mat for thinking, man, look at all that stuff on the wall. And I know that I took a picture. I don't believe it was, it wasn't this invitation. It must have been the one before that there were some kids from another team that were just standing out on the floor trying to count stuff on those banners. Just, it was, you know, just observing it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the documentary, Ron, because you, you're out of time. Yes, <clears throat> the documentary, the Bradley Central High School Wrestling History, uh, is going to be available the 5th of January, January 5th, 2016. Steve Lockson is one of the very few people in the world who has seen it outside of Deb and I. Uh, your first impressions? Uh, well, I, obviously, I loved it, and I love Bradley Wrestling, and, and, and I love what you guys did with it, and, uh, you know, I love the footage, and... The interviews, everything, everything about it. I just love, love the music, the, the original music that Ron. Had I love that big with. attitude. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just thought it was really great. You know, what's what's this thing bad about it? But the unfortunate thing is, when you have a, a history as deep as ours and a tradition as deep as ours, well, you can't give everybody what right. you would like to give them as far as pictures and. And, That's right, and, and, and you can't. People That's are going looking right. for the. Where's my picture? Where's my well? We've had thousand kids go through there, and all kind of big events, and state champions, and this and that, and and uh, you know. Uh, it was hard to get off of a headshot or action shot of all the forty four guys that had won those sixty seven well, we first place. Medals. We don't have an action shot of ever. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, we ended up with just headshots because we couldn't find things. But that was a major <clears throat> undertaking to find those. You guys had put together probably 25 or 30 and, of them and, and find those last 14. <laughs> thanks to Sherry Vincent and Debbie Moore here, uh, we got all the photos you could ever want. Yes. When I say 10,000 photos, that's probably not, uh, you know, uh, but Deb, I, I was cleaning out Deb's computer the other day, transferring it to a four gigabyte hard drive, <laughs> extra, and there's 37,000 pictures. Oh, my. Thirty-seven. I'd say half of those are men in tights. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but it's twenty dollars. All the proceeds go to uh, the wrestling program thanks to the sponsors we have paid for the printing of the DVDs. And uh, uh, Deb and I did it just because uh, we, well, well, we the history needed to be done. And uh, say not everybody's names mentioned. We tried to have. I think we got almost every team picture that was taken mm -hmm. that we had that we could find we have put it in there so you know try to get that and you know there are people say oh, are you going to mention so and so and so and i says i'm not even sure i'm going to mention you <laughs> right you know at that point i says you know uh people who provide me videos i tried to use them and but uh um you know thanks to your mom and dad for the great scrapbook they have oh them. mom did great with scrapbooks oh, for years and, years and years and years great great history there and uh, Sherry Vincent, who brought in a, must have been like a 13-gallon trash bag, well, it was a trash bag, it was some kind of storage bag full of newspaper clippings, uh, helped us a lot, too. Mm -hmm. I pressed those, then put them yeah. on the scanner, and they, they came up pretty good. And you get really good action shots that way. You just mentioned two of the biggest, I mean, there, there's first of all, my parents, there, there's no bigger wrestling fans anywhere. I thought we um, had really cute pictures of them in there, too. Oh, Yo, you did. You did. And, and they've been around, you know, since 1981. No one else can boast. They've been, my dad has been at matches since 1981 with me as a wrestler. Then when I was gone to college, when he wasn't seeing me, he was watching Bradley Wrestling. I came back to coach. He's been there ever since. And then, you know, just been a lifetime. I don't know if anyone has been a longer, a longer, more consistent fan than him and my mom. And then, um, and, and then Sherry Vincent, the, the work that she's done with the program over the past I don't know how many years, at least 16 or 17. Yeah, since right, Rusty around was 2000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is unbelievable. Not just yeah. being there as a fan, but helping and, 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 and doing things for the kids. And, and just know, very, her, her things are more organized than mine. <laughs> yeah, just very, she's very thoughtful. Just thoughtful yeah. things. The collages on the walls we have are because of her. Like my mom taking the time to do the scrapbook. Sherry did the collages and, and many, many, many more things. The video and the... And the uh, the pictures. And that's something that it's important. Mike Craig and does a lot. Mike Craig is great. Yeah, yeah does some yeah. good videos. Yeah, that, that stuff will be around forever. You know, yeah. and you guys have taken it and, and put it all into one 
into it's, one CD. P- it could have been four hours long. Yeah. It, oh, absolutely. You know, it, it just tries to tell the story in uh, interviews by Jerry Frazier, the very first coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, Turner Jackson. Mm-hmm. The uh, Godfather. He he Godfather, yeah. He Fesslinger. Mm-hmm. Uh, so modest Chad Laxton, Steve Logston, yeah. and Ben Smith. Uh, and uh, uh, turned out it turned out good. Like I say, all original music, and it's a lot of fun to have original music. And uh, so... Make sure you pick one up. Uh, uh, if you're a Cleveland fan or a Walker Valley fan, uh, you may see some of your pictures in there, too, because uh, there are some movies where we beat you guys. And I, I promise you, if Cleveland had one of these done, I would I would buy it. Oh, I, I love wrestling. I, just, I love wrestling. I love to see the stories and programs, yeah. and if it was, I would love it. So I other people may want to see this, too. Cleveland, Cleveland has a good history, too. They sure do. And we're working yeah. on fixing a buy button so that it can be bought online and mailed. Yeah, we, we we've had that. a lot of folks that have. Well, I'm I'm sure that there are people from uh, former wrestlers. They're Frank, all over the country. Father Ryan people may want to buy it, and uh, Saudi Daisy people, and uh, if you love wrestling in general, uh, yeah, and, and it, it's good. It's a lot of good. Well, Steve, anything else? <sighs> Nothing I can think of, Ron. Well, I, I want someone else. We got to spend some. Go out to your mom and dad's house and spend some time with them. Back before Christmas, uh, or I guess before Thanksgiving, even, mm-hmm. uh, and sit down with them, and uh, we found out some things about you that uh, were unknown. <laughs> no. Don't you believe those people? Oh no, uh, I didn't know you were an artist that you could draw. The, that, the, the typical ball. mom, she's pulling out the artwork oh, and the coins and, and the, the poetry you wrote. Yeah, oh my I goodness! Mean, it's really good stuff. Oh. You guys are blowing my image here. You oh. Amazing. You're some toughy. Oh, I'm a tough guy. Yeah. That. Hey guys, <laughs> we'll see you next week back here. On the wrestling mat. Woo Violent Radio 99. Every Saturday morning from 10 till noon.